So the bishop in a local church, I like to think of it as the, the spiritual overseer. I mean, and obviously if there are no deacons in a church, he'll be looking over the physical needs as well. But his main, his main role, uh, in my opinion, is to be the spiritual overseer in the local church. We see here in Acts 20, 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And how do we know that that's talking about the bishops? Well, we read uh, earlier on uh, in verse 17, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. So Paul in Acts 20 calls the elders of the church there at Ephesus, and then he's uh, talking with them, he's about to leave them, um, and he, and he uh, basically exhorts them in verse 28 to take heed therefore unto yourselves, so look after your own faith, first of all, and to all the flock which, over the which the Holy Ghost hath, hath made you overseers. So the elder or the bishop is a spiritual overseer uh, over the flock of God. And, you know, that's what the, the word bishop means, as far as I understand, that the word bishop just means uh, an overseer. You know, pastor means shepherd. Um, bishop means overseer. We see bishop used in the New Testament. I believe this is the only time overseer in the New Testament is used. Okay, Titus. One. So we've got the bishop and the deacon. The bishop is a spiritual overseer. I personally believe that an elder and a bishop is the same thing. So I don't believe a deacon is an elder. I only believe a, a bishop is an elder. I know there are other views out there where there is elder is like another position you can hold and then elders get ordained into bishops or deacons. I guess you could make that make sense as well. So, you know, I'm not totally against that position at all. You know, you could look at the verse and say, well, you know, ordain he ordained elders in every church. The elders were already elders in the church and then they were ordained into the position of bishop and deacon. I personally believe that bishop and elder are the same office. Um, so, in, so the elders of the church are the bishops and then you have deacons which are just uh, people who are hired to look after the physical needs of a church. And the reason why I think that um, is in Titus because the, the words are interchanged. And if you look, if you compare this to Timothy, Timothy chapter 3, you see if any man desires the office of a bishop and then talks about the office of a deacon. So we see the two offices there. In Titus, it only talks about the office of a bishop. So it says here in verse 5, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So Paul appointed Titus as an elder, as a bishop in Crete and said, hey, you need to ordain elders in every city as he, he had appointed him. And then he goes on with the qualifications of a bishop. Look, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go on with that in this sermon. But that's the reason why I believe elders are only bishops, because in Titus 1, he says, you know, I've ordained you, and then I want you to ordain elders in every city, like I ordained you as a bishop. And then, he's, then he goes on to say, well, a bishop must be blameless, and then he gives the qualifications of a bishop, but he doesn't give the qualifications of a deacon. He doesn't mention a deacon here. And that's the reason why I think only um, bishops are elders, and deacons are not, even though they do have a position of authority and they do oversee certain things. Um, let's have a look here in 1 Timothy 5, verse 17 and 18. It says here in verse 17, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy... Oh, sorry, did I read that right? The elders that rule, rule well be counted worthy of double honour, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And you say here, is it just saying that you should respect them more than uh, other people in the church? No, because that honor there is talking about um, that they should be supported and they should be paid um, if they need to be. Verse 18 says, For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his 
reward. So it says here, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So we see again that elders, bishops in the local church, they rule. They do make decisions and they have authority in the local church. And what I take from this verse is that, you know, there are some elders that may labor in the word in doctrine and there are some elders that may not. So not every elder or bishop necessarily labors in the word and doctrine. They may have other um, responsibilities in the church, not necessarily the teaching and the preaching of God's word. You know, that's fine. So some labor in word and doctrine, uh, some do not. The elders rule in the house of God. But the other thing I wanted to mention here in verse 18, I think it's very clear in this passage that there's nothing wrong with a bishop or a deacon getting paid. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with a, well, well, a bishop, because you know, we're talking about elders here. There's nothing wrong with a bishop getting paid. And I think it's very clear here that it says that we should, they should be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and in doctrine. For the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. And I don't really want to hit on this point too much, but the reason why it'd be, I think it'd be hard to argue that bishops and deacons should not get paid, like it's wrong to pay them or it's wrong for them to get a paycheck from the church, is because this, this whole chapter of 1 Timothy 5 is talking about people getting supported by the local church. I mean, if, if you can read through it yourself later, but it talks about, uh, you know, being widows being taken on and being supported by the church and the qualifications that they need to meet for a church to take care of them. And people might say, no, no, that honor, that the honor that, um, that that passage is talking about in verse 17 and 18 is just giving them respect. But, you know, when it starts to talk about the widows, about taking on the widows, it, look at what it says in verse 3. Honor widows that are widows indeed. You know, so when it talks about later on, you know, taking on a widow and providing for a widow, and then it says later on, if you provide not for his own, especially of those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So when, when, when a widow needs help, you're not just giving her more respect. I mean, you're giving her support, your financial support, helping her, you know, because obviously if her husband has just, has just died and she doesn't have that income, but she's a godly woman that has uh, been part of the church, it's the church's responsibility to take care of her so that she can continue to raise her children and focus on them rather than having to go get a job and then put her kids in daycare. So I think it'd be hard to argue that um, bishops cannot be paid. I mean, uh, you know, not all of them are. I'm not saying a bishop must be paid, but it's definitely not wrong if they are, if they do take a, take a, take a paycheck. Now, the, the last thing I just want to say here is, you know, it, it's called the office of a bishop. It's not called the office of a pastor. And I know we, we generally refer to it in our modern day colloquial as pastor. And, I, you know, I don't really have a problem with that. I know I sort of make an issue of it. It's not that I have a problem with it. I'm just trying to change our vocabulary because I want to... I want to take the word back, you know, because it is in the, in, a, in the King James Bible, it's the office of a bishop. It's not the office of a pastor. And I just feel like I want to take that word back from the Catholics because the only reason why people have an association of the word bishop with the Catholic Church is because the Catholic Church uses it. They use the word bishop and they refer, you know, we don't shy away the, from the word church because the Catholics use it. We don't start calling it something else. You know, we use that word and we just claim it as our own and, and, and um, try and re-educate people on what a bishop really is. He's an he's a, he's a authority in the local true church of Jesus Christ, not a guy you know, with a big hat and a robe in um, the Catholic church. So yeah, we, we shouldn't shy away from using the word bishop if that's the word the Bible uses to describe the office. Um, you know, and unfortunately, we've just replaced it. You know, we've shied away from the word generally because of the Catholic Church and we've replaced it with the word pastor instead of just using the word uh, that's used in our Bible.